Hi, this is CB, and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about masks in Elements. It's a little bit more than just the adjustment layer mask we've been working with in some of the other tutorials. This is going to show you how you can apply a mask to any layer of a photograph and work with, it's a workaround for the quick mask that would be in Photoshop that you don't have in Elements. So we have here a picture of my daughter and I'm going to use this mask to talk about skin softening a little bit. We'll do a little skin softening trick. So first thing we're going to need is we're going to duplicate this layer because we're going to work on another um, copy of it. And let me just hit Control and J to duplicate it or Command and J on a Mac. But before I even start using the skin softening trick on this layer I need to have a mask, of course, to work with, too. So I'm going to click back down on this lower layer, this background layer, and I'm going to go ahead and use the adjustment layer here. I'll click in here. It really doesn't matter which one you pick for this because we're not going to make any changes on any of these particular things like levels or whatnot. We're just going to leave it as is. I'll just choose Hue Saturation here and then click OK. I'm not going to make any changes to those settings because what I'm interested in this is this mask associated with this layer rather than the hue and saturation. So if you've used templates, this next step is going to be very familiar. We're going to create a clipping group and we're going to create the clipping group between this picture layer and this mask. So if I click on this top layer of the photo again, hit Control and G or Command and G on a Mac, You'll, you can see absolutely no change happening, of course, at this point, but except for the fact that this layer now has that little down pointing arrow to mean it's clipped into this group. And again, what that's going to allow us to do is allow us to have this mask work with this photo. Just as if you were using Photoshop and you use a quick mask, you'd see like the thumbnail of the photo here and then the mask. So now let's make a change to this layer so that we start seeing something happen here. And I'm going to blur this with some Gaussian Blur. Filter, oops, Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur here. Let it come up. And, you know, I've got it on 5 right now. I could use it, I'll use it a little bit more than I would normally for this tutorial just to show you some dramatic changes here, I think. Yeah, it's, yeah. Okay. That's, as I say, a bit higher than a, a setting I would normally use, but I want to have a good before and after shot so you might want to think about using a little less than 10 here. I'll click OK. So now of course we've got blurry layer, this adjustment layer with that mask and then down here the bottom of the layers palette is the clear thing. And of course I want, what I want is a mixture of these two layers. I want the skin to be mostly softened so it's going to be kind of blurred looking but of course it looks terrible because the eyes are out of focus now blurred and the mouth and everything so we need to tell the program let's start putting the clarity back in that part and we're going to use this mask to do it. Black will tell this mask to show whatever layers below this mask it's going to show through and in this case it's the clear copy. So let's grab a brush from the, over here, the brush tool and I've got my opacity down a little bit. It could, you know, it's not that important that it is or isn't, but I'm going to go ahead and start with it being a little bit a little bit down to 80% here. But what is important for this is use a blurry tool, a blurry brush rather. And if you see the edges of my brush right now, this is the default brush set. It's these kind of brushes here where it's a blurred edge rather than these where it's a very sharp defined edge. So let's go in there. I've already got a pretty good size here going. But if before I start painting, because I want to paint in black on the mask and not on the photo, just click on here once over on this thumbnail of the mask once just to make sure it's active. And now so when you start painting, you see the clarity of her eyes come back into focus here. Go and do things like mouth and then of course the outfit. I'm going to make my brush bigger with the bracket key and go over pretty quickly here. This is not going to be perfect, but you know, I want to have it certainly a little more in focus than it is. Then. And as I say, you'll as you look at this thumbnail over here now, you'll see the black is being put on the thumbnail rather than on the photo itself. So eyes, things like eyes, eyebrow, hair, if your child actually has hair unlike mine, <laughs> I would probably put some on. This is an older photo of my daughter. She does have a little bit more hair now, I'm happy to say nostril and sort of bit in the nose areas. And then the last thing you could do is to lower the opacity of this one mask layer down a little bit to make it blend in a little bit better. But let me show you a, b oh wait, let me click out of that first. Let me show you this was before. So everything's pretty much in focus, pretty clear and all that. But there's some 
areas in the skin where it's a little uneven and then by going ahead and putting this mask on and I still have this pretty high I would probably still lower the opacity of these a bit more it's made it a little bit softer and there are any other you know areas I could put back in focus if I wanted to the best part about a mask is I can go back and paint with white if I want some area more blurry paint with black on it if I want it to be more in focus because that's the way that masks work so I hope you have enjoyed this little tip on learning how to use a mask with elements and this clipping group tip so that you can do anything to a certain photo layer, use a mask, and then have the layer below that mask show through so you can have a nice mix of these layers together with the use of masks. I'm CB and thanks for watching.